Uh, I finished playing high school in Fresno, California with a great coach named Ron Moore, who was, uh, you know, your career is your coach as a player. And so if the coach believes in you and gives you the opportunity, your career goes forward. And he gave me that, he gave me the green light. And I was able to really grow and develop. Nowadays, everybody looks at those kids and says, oh, he's got the potential to go on and play. Professionally, for sure, nobody was saying that about me. And for sure, my coaches included. I mean, I don't think anybody was thinking, I, I just love to play, so. I thought there was a chance I could play in college, but I didn't think I'd play on. But I went from Masters not starting to averaging 18 and then averaging 23 and then averaging 28, which was number one in the country at the time. Second was Allen Iverson. Uh, so that kind of put me on the map. There were a number of games at Masters where uh, every NBA team was there to watch. And a lot of that was triggered by Bill Oates, my head coach, who made phone calls and just said, hey, you need to come take a look at this guy, see if he's any good. At one of the practices, John Wooden said to me, hey, Mike, you know, I was 19 at the time. I was a sophomore. And he said, you remind me of one of my former players. And I said, no kidding. And I thought, you know, he was just kind of joking around. But he said, no, you remind me of Gail Goodrich. I said, that's crazy. And he goes, yeah, you're, you're actually going to play in the NBA, I think. Ended up not getting drafted. Was invited to, to work out with the Pacers for their summer league team. Larry Bird was a coach. Rick Carlisle was assistant coach. Um, so I got to know real quick what the NBA was like, and I tore my hamstring. You know, I thought my career was done. I went and worked in a warehouse. Um, I didn't know what God was doing. You know, you brought me from nothing to, to, to success, potential NBA career, and then now the door shuts. I had no idea what was going on at the time. My hamstring healed. I hadn't done anything with a basketball for six months. I went on to get a phone call one day from the CBA. Idaho Stampede was a new uh, expansion team. They said, we're going to draft you. What kind of shape are you in? And I was like, oh, I'm in great shape, you know. <laughs> that wasn't at all. So I went and uh, I worked out for two weeks hard, uh, got myself in the best shape I could, went to training camp. They drafted me sixth pick in the draft in the CBA. Went up there for camp, played great, scored 25 points in one of the games, and then was cut after the game. So I was confused again, like, what are you doing, Lord? I thought, I thought we were going on the right track here. I drove back home from Idaho. I saw my uncle, who was dying at the time, and he said, what are you worried about? You know, God's in control. Played in the summer league, had a, had a game at 3 p.m. The Lakers played at 5. I played really well at 3. The assistant coaches were there watching, and they asked me if I would work out for them privately, so I did. I played well. They invited me to a 30-person tryout. I was the only one picked in the tryout after three days. And Mitch Kupchak came to me and said, hey, enjoy your week of training camp here. You've earned it. So I, I kind of had like, there was an end in sight. Like I got a week here with the Lakers. I'm gonna get as much gear as I can get. And I'm gonna take as many shots as I can. And I went on to make everything for like three weeks. So I stayed past the first week. I ended up scoring 16 in my first preseason game against the Hornets and 14 the next night against the Wizards. So I started to show some success and ended up making the Lakers. I went on to win a championship that year. Shaq and I were very close. I mean, an amazing guy. We, we, we clicked right away. He was a big part of why I, I actually got to play because he threw me the ball all the time. So when I was making shots, I knew the ball was coming from him and he always, always like moved me over and say, here, shoot it, you know. You know, I needed, I needed suits. I didn't have any suits. I didn't have any money when I made the Lakers. So he bought me suits. He, anything I needed, he was there. He just said, look, you tell me what you need, I got you, you know? Um, so, but it, it goes even further than that. Like when my dad passed away when I was 27, I was playing in Europe. Shaq heard about it. He said, I'm gonna cover the cost for the funeral. I got this. So even when I wasn't around him as a, as a teammate, I was always a teammate in his mind. And that's the way he treats all his guys. Uh, in terms of their teammates, you know, if you're once a part of that. But he and I had a special relationship, and we've always remained, remained close. Um, there's love there for sure. Yeah, so Kobe Bryant, um, what a, what a, I mean, I knew Kobe 8, not Kobe 24. You know, Kobe 8 was unbelievably athletic at the time. Super, I mean, he was 22, 23 when I played with him. So it's sad to think about the tragedy. Obviously, we, we mourn for the loss of him not being here and for his family and all the other people involved as well. But being a Christian and knowing Christ, to me, is the only way to have hope. 
of seeing him again. I want to look forward to seeing Kobe Bryant again someday. I, I pray that that's part of what his character in life became, that he did come to know Christ. God has worked in my life as a player in that he showed me it's possible to play for him. Uh, so much of basketball is about me. It's about selfishness. It's about promoting yourself. It's about trying to gain your followers or you know establish yourself as a player and all those type of things and I just had to trust that that God had a plan and he was working through me and that when I played um, you know, I, I grew closer to him through basketball and all the aspects of basketball whether it be teamwork and understanding how to work with players Christians non-Christians alike respecting authority trusting that God was gonna you know teach me something through losing through winning and then even like learning how to accept the fact that nobody wants you anymore and you retire and you're done. You know, I was done at 33 and I had gotten to play 11 years, which was amazing. And, and successes and failures and struggles and battles and wins and losses and all that. The older I get and the more I'm around tragedy and people that I love that are lost, the more I, it, it simplifies and gets smaller. It isn't big, big things, which I thought it was in college and you know, all these great theological discussions on all kinds of things. Christianity has become very simple. You know, walk with God every day in the Word. Pray every day about everything. Worship and think about Him as much as possible. And then share that with Christians and non-Christians alike. My first job is to love my players and listen to them, you know. Uh, I don't think players care what you know if until they know that you care, right? So. If they know I care about them, they know I'm here for them, they know I'm, I want what's best for them, I can coach them, I can say just about anything I want and they'll listen. So it's a constant reminder just to be humble and to love them unconditionally. You know, faults on the court, off the court, these are my guys, I'm gonna roll with them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for them and love them every day. But that love also means I'm gonna correct, I'm gonna teach, I'm going to keep them in line. That's my job as a coach too. So, but that's again the same picture of God as our Father doing the same thing. So he, he I, I try to use that same word. How would Christ coach? How would God coach a team? That's what I want to be. You know, I want to know exactly what I'm talking about. I want to do it in love, um, and then I want to shape and mold them through throughout the whole season or even my time with them. I want to help shape their thinking. Um, and then hopefully there's conversations that come out of that and say why you're the way you are and I can point them to Christ. When you think about God and the religions of the world, I want to find the one that, that understands me. It isn't just a distant thing. I feel like Christ came to earth, lived as I did, suffered as I did, struggled as I did, saw friends die, saw pain, uh, saw success, saw, saw friendship, but also lived you know, the, the way that, that we live and then suffered, died for us on the cross. And then where this the whole story changes is that he was then resurrected back to life. So he not only came, suffered and, and died, but then he he won. He was the he was the victory. You know, he, he was victorious over this life. So just that claim, like if he's that guy, then I want to follow that guy. That's, that's the win, you know, and that's what separates him from everything else. And if you've never taken the opportunity to accept him as your personal Lord, uh, you need to do that today. You need to take that time and pray and accept Christ in your heart and then let him change you. That's what it's all about. He will, he will change you. God reveals Jesus to you and then he takes over. And that's what's amazing about it. But that's the hard part too. So if you've never made that, that choice today, do it. I'm Mike Penberthy and I play for him.